thing now. Can you hear me? That? That'll be me, Glenis. Is that me? Hey, yeah, it is, Phil. How are you? Isn't Thanks technology nice funny? <laughs> I'm doing really well. Thanks so much for asking. <laughs> Excellent. Whereabouts are you in this big wide world today? I'm uh, just a few hours east of Melbourne. Been quite uh, sunny down here today. Busy okay. day. But, uh, Excellent. Well, thanks for joining me as a panellist on the call today. Uh, driving home with the Rob Academy, talking business. And tonight we're going to talk about our why. So, so Phil, I know that your business is called Profit Improvers and um, you work with family owners, uh, service and retail type businesses who want to grow their business. Yeah, is that right? Tell me a little uh, bit more about what you do. Yeah, that's right, Glennis. So I, I, lo I love business and uh, I love working with family, uh, family owned businesses. Particularly yeah. in that in those uh, those fields, as I say, and most of those sort of want uh, more leads and customers and more profit, wanting to grow their business. So um, I help them uh, teach them some strategies and uh, and tactics uh, to give them those those tools. Well, uh, so who wouldn't want more profits in business? Really, you know. Um, I haven't met anyone yet, Glass. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks so much for being on the call. We also have another guest speaker tonight, um, which is Corey Millard, and Corey's from Melbourne Business Video Production, and yes. um, and he works with business owners who are wanting to create more video content because you know video is a big thing these days, you know. Um, and so, Corey, you can hear us. Yes, can you hear me now, Glennis? Yeah, I can. Awesome. That's good. Thanks Fantastic. for joining us. Whereabouts are you in I'm Melbourne? In South Melbourne, so not far from the city at all. Oh, very good. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. I know that you um, you like to, you work with business owners who are wanting, you know, to create video content because, like, that's the in thing these days, isn't it? So um, what is it that, you know, you do exactly? Tell yeah, well, what. you said it. So it is, it is the thing to do because um, it's one of the greatest tools you can really use to um to tell your story and really you know share about your business and, and what you're up to and like what, what this uh webinar is about tonight is all about your why and as a business owner people want to know why you do what you do so with mm. video that's a great way you can demonstrate that and, and tell your uh, your customers or your consumers yeah absolutely and um yeah and you're right we are talking a bit about you know what's your why and that's funny because you know, I, I, in my, and what I do with businesses in my profession, I always start with why. And people go, well, you know, I get out of bed. You know, I said, why do you get out of bed? Oh, to pay the mortgage? I go, nah, that's not why you get out of bed. What else do you get out of bed for, you know? And, and so we have to get past the money side of it because we, in reality, um, it's a lot more inspirational if you're getting out of bed and you're talking to people about why you do what you do. Okay. Which is not about money. Um, and especially on these cold winter mornings in Melbourne, you know, if you have money as you're motivated to get out of bed, I think most people would stay in bed. So, you know, uh, I actually, back in 2010, I, I came across a book um, by Simon Sinek and you might've, might have actually um, heard about that. It's called Start With Why. And, um, and I, I read it and I actually did a few presentations on it. And um, he was really, really inspiring as to what his why was. But also the book talk, talked about the Wright brothers. Um, it talked about Apple and it also talked about um, Martin Luther King and what their wives were and how come they had so many people, how come they were inspirational and had the influence um, around people. And I've got a really great story I can share with you around, you know, why Apple in six years uh, went to a billion dollar company and it wasn't because of money because Wozniak was not, you know, like that. So um, I'm going to share that with you later, but Corey, you and I work together uh, mm. and in uh, in the business growth area, and um, and we were talking about your why, and it was so inspirational. I wanted to get you on on this um, drive home because I think everybody needs to have a why, but yours is so inspirational that I wanted to have you share that with everyone. And um, 
And, um, and then, you know, Phil will probably share his why. I'm going to share my why. And I'm also going to um, you know, give you some more information about that book, uh, Start With Why, from Simon Sinek around the Apple company. But, yeah, do you want to tell us what your why is, Corey? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're so right about um, if you just have it for money, if that's your only reason to get out of bed, it just doesn't work. Because I was telling myself I'm doing this because of money and all that sort of stuff. And there was just no motivation there really. So it wasn't until you really pressed me and said, why is it that you do what you do? And I, I really confess that it's my ultimate goal is to change the state of the Australian film industry. I want to, I want to create content that represents ourselves, our culture and really our identity because I feel like it's getting lost in the, in the mass uh, production of content out there nowadays in terms of film and television, there's just not many Australian stories being told. And so mm. it's r- really important for me to, to stop that and, and to have our stories out there. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so many great movies that just get made in Australia too, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. And we don't even know what, like I was in, um, <laughs> I was in Coles the other day and they have all these videos on sale and the dressmaker was on for sale and, and it was eight bucks. I love that yeah. movie, you know? Yeah. And and then I, I was reading the back of it and um, it said it was actually made just outside of Melbourne just before you get to Geelong in Little River. Mm. I didn't even know that. And and yet um, I should have, but I didn't. But it was like there's so many great movies out there that are made in Australia. We don't really know that. Yeah. And that's right. And I think it's only like if you wait it up, Australia will probably have four major feature films um, completed a year and that's so low compared to some of the other bigger countries obviously america is really big but even countries like new zealand and and smaller countries like the uk they still have a much bigger output of feature films so it's it's just a bit sad that we aren't producing the amount of films that are really interesting because i think we we all want to know more about our culture and our our identity but it's just not being represented like i was saying and where do you and where are you going to start do you have you got any idea where you're going to start from in terms of story ideas or? Yeah, uh, in terms of your story ideas. I Because mean, I know that when you get in front of businesses, you do capture their story, right? Yeah, so, and you, you're able to put that in um, video content for them in a way that actually has um, people generate, le- le- generates leads for them, right? So you're actually able to pull out what's really required from their story um, made them feel comfortable behind the camera because I've seen you do that. In fact, you've done that with me. So it's like, well, um, you know, where do you, are you going to just transfer that level of skill over to, you know, the bigger why for yourself? How do you intend on doing that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. So I think I just have a real healthy curiosity of people um, and it comes from being a storyteller. And you're right, it does reflect in how I sort of do business um, with clients because, I know these people have great stories to tell and it might be just insecurity or not feeling comfortable to speak in front of the camera, but I want to know them. I want to get to know them and I really take pride in making them feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, and as for the stories, it's the same sort of thing. I, I just, I look around and see, see issues. So like, it's, it's pretty obvious that the world's not working as well as it, as we would like it to. And for me, it's some, um, some topics that, um, Australian topics that have hit home for me is, uh, one is the uh, the ice epidemic that's happening in rural Australian towns, and I really want to. I've got an outline for a uh, a feature film about that, and sort of, yeah, you know, really representing that. That's not the way things should be. It's not really a moral film. It's more just being reflective, you know, holding the mirror to to society and saying this is what is going on, and we can't just turn a blind eye to it. We need to sort of face it and, and help these poor rural communities. So. That's one story that I've been working with producers with um, this last year, which is gaining That's awesome. traction. Yeah. yeah. Great cause. Yeah, exactly. So just things like that, that really, you know, <coughs> I, I want to make a difference with the films I, I create, not just um, be entertaining, but also be thought provoking and, and like really touch, touch emotions. Mm. Mm. That's great. And, um, and what, and Phil, tell us what your why is. Um, well, I suppose over uh, the last 30 years of dealing with businesses and, and talking with them, I've seen plenty of business owners put in a great deal of time, money and effort for 
not not as much as reward as they should be should be getting. So when I was in the banking industry, I had to say no to them uh, plenty of times. And when I was in the accounting industry, I had to let them know of tax bills that they were unable to afford. Um, so all these business owners were sort of pushing uphill all the time but never quite getting the momentum that they they needed to start getting the rewards that they they deserved. So I was sort of unable to help as a as a banker and the finance they needed and the, the things I needed from them to provide the finance sort of just went round and round in circles. And um, as an accountant, the industry sort of got a bit bogged down with compliance rather than helping businesses make more money. So yeah, um, I just want to help uh, small business owners and family businesses capitalise on on the uh, the time and effort and and pain that they go through to uh, <laughs> to uh, own their own own business and set their own destiny and help them get. Uh, achieve the life they uh, they wanted for for them and their families. Yeah, what a great why that is. You know, um, like you as an accountant, I saw a lot of businesses come past my desk, their financial statements and stuff, and it was the old eighty twenty rule. Eighty percent of people were just really getting a, um, profits that would equate to a job, not even with super, and. Um, and 20% of the ones that were really making some serious money, money enough to, to really like fit the lifestyle of you've given up a, a steady job to have flexibility to bring up family and maybe support older members of family and things like that. So you should be well rewarded for that. Um, but that wasn't the case. And people see accountants as their trusted advisors, right? But accountants are not like you said before, they're not helping businesses grow their business. They are so stuck on compliance work. So that's why I sold my business, my accounting practice and created a coaching business. And my why is, and I've got this down to 13 words and you will know how, you know, like passionate I am around about words because it's really clear that, you know, if you can say something very concise, people remember it. So my why is to reduce the business failure rate in Australia from double digits to single digits. That's it. And, um, and why that to me encompasses so much and it, it influences my decision making, it influences where I put my focus. Um, it just, it's really high level and it's something that's outside of me. And that's what gets me out of bed, it's a contribution and that's what lights me up. That's why I do what I do, you know. Um, that's yeah, very, very so powerful. Welcome to Melbourne. <laughs> that, is, that is very powerful, Glennis. And as you say, it does, it does cover, cover a lot. And I suppose every time you look at the news and it says 12%, you're sitting there going, oh, I've got more work to do. <laughs> exactly. I've got more coaches to put on <laughs> to train up to help the businesses, right? And um, I don't think, well, I'd like to think that would make a difference in my lifetime because I'm going to live for another 60 years, right? And um, so hopefully I can make the difference in that. But, you know, like, if not, I'm passing it on to somebody else. And that's that's my why. That's the passion that I have in my why, you know. Yeah. Corey, you, you know, you would have been inspired by something about your why. What was it? Was it one of the big guys that inspired you, Google or something like that? Who inspired you? Uh, yeah, so it's a big broad spectrum so it's from filmmakers but also obviously apple the way apple operate even amazon i forget the guy's name but how he's changed amazon to what it is now it's it blows me away and he's also got his own um film stream on with with the um, amazon prime video i think it's called so he's someone that i really look to and go he's merged entertainment and business together as well so um that's really good yeah yeah what about you, Phil? Have you got any other, do you know anyone else who's why, some of the big guys or anything like that? Um, not necessarily sp specifically. Um, like you, you hear of you hear of Apple and, and bits and pieces and like, and like you, I've, I've read the uh, Simon Sinek's book and that, so I'm yeah. aware of those, those stories and it's certainly that you're going to share with us later on and that certainly um, puts it 
puts it in a, a bit more perspective. I, I probably, uh, I, my inspiration comes from the people I sort of talk to, I suppose. They, they mm. tell you about all the stuff that they've been doing and I sort of think, man, I, I just want to help you. <laughs> like, so that's probably where, where that comes from. But. Yeah, good. Well, what I might do is last week we left all the question and answers right to the very end and <clears throat> we had to rush through some. So, you know, if you've got any questions through the Corey, Phil, um, or myself in relation to what we do or how we got our why or anything like that, just pop them in the, in the Q&A questions there. Um, because we're going to take some questions, you know, now we'll get back and we'll do some more talking and then we'll finish off with some more questions as well. Um, so, yeah, so is there anyone that's wanting to, you know, ask anything of, of anyone there? I actually got one, um, one question here and it's from Selena. Thanks for joining us, Selena. It's really great you are there. Um, and she said, you know, how do you get to the, how do you get to the bottom of your why? Because, you know, she said that she she thinks she knows what she wants, but how do you get how do you find your why? And one of the things I all I I say to people when and I say, well, what do you do? What you do? And they give me an answer, and then I go, so why do you do that? And they give me another answer, and then it's almost like a bit of a game, you know. It's like I keep asking why. And, um, and sometimes I pre-frame that just so that they don't get angry with me and throw something at me, right? But um, so I just keep, I keep asking why, why? And it really has them dig deep into something that's outside of them, okay? Because we, we actually need to do this in pairs to do it, right? And that's what I've found anyway. Um, Corey, have you got it? Or Phil, have you got any, anything to further add to Selena's question there? Uh, well, I sort of use a, as a bit of a five-step framework to sort of get, get started. Yeah. I just sort of ask uh, five questions. So I just ask who, who I am. Yep. Who are you? And then uh, what, do I, what do I do? So those two are talking about just about me. And then it's who do I do it for? And what do those people want or need? And, and how... Um, how they change as a result. Yep. That just sort of gets that gets it flowing, and those three questions are all about uh, my customers or the people I'm wanting to serve. So all of a sudden, it's sort of just a bit of a generator to the ideas start flowing from there. And find if you if you just sort of write what comes into your mind from there, all of a sudden you'll get on a bit of a roll or. It might just be the first thing you write might end up being, oh, well, there you go. That is it. Yeah, good. So you've got five steps that you look at and you take people through. I, I just keep asking the question why. Five so why's, that's, a, a that's another good annoying. one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what about you, Corey? How did you get to yours? Like, you know, what, what was it that had you really dig deep outside yourself? Yeah, well, you actually helped me discover this and it was when you did keep asking me why 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 <laughs> and um what really happened that there was a feeling of being alive once i answered your why so many times i was just so present to what it is and you know when i wake up at say five in the morning because i got to go do a shoot that's what's in the back of my mind now that's what makes me go you know I, i'm i'm up for something bigger um so i think it's like a for me it was a feeling it was like an emotion it wasn't something that um Mm. The process I had to go through. I just really felt it. I felt alive. Mm. And and um, yeah, and what I'm just getting from you, your conversation then too, Corey, is that you know when you say that you're up at you know quarter to five or whatever in the morning and you're out doing the shoot, you really are playing a big game, mm. aren't you? Yeah. When you start playing a big game, it's that you really do start to feel alive. You don't. You? That's exactly right. Yeah, and it's because it's so easy to say, ah. Oh, I shouldn't have taken this job. Like it's ridiculous how early I got to get up. But as you said, like if you're not playing a big game, you're really just you, you're not doing yourself any favors because you can. You're just going to exist. You're not going to really strive for anything greater than. than True. Yeah, that's right. And as a business owner, and I, I, you probably find this the same. I know I do. I love working in groups of people, and I love it that you're on the on the webinar 
you know, you know, when we're um, sharing our experiences about our why tonight on um, the Dry Home webinar for the Rob Academy. And the reason why is because, you know, we are, you know, we collectively can get things from each other. And as a group, you, you do tend to learn more. Because business is lonely out there by yourself. So solopreneurs, are, they're pretty lonely, right? And unless you actually join a group of like-minded people or you're a part of a group, could be a networking group, could be an educational group of like-minded people, you tend to actually still, you tend to play a little game, don't you? What do you think about that, Corey? Cool. Yeah, definitely. I think because, so I'm in, I'm in a couple of groups. Obviously, the Rob Academy is a, a big one that I'm a part of and it's almost like you keep each other accountable. You, you, sort of, you give your word, you say what you're out to cause and, and people are going to ask you about have you, have you done what you said you're going to do? And it's just really good. You have that community behind you that want to support you, but also, as, as I said, keep you accountable for what you said. Yeah, great. And Phil, what about you? You have a community out there? Yeah, and I, and I think um, sometimes seeing someone else having the, the courage to put themselves out there, it uh, puts it back on you a bit. You go, well, you know, good on them and, well, I should be able to do it too, you know. So even just, uh, and then the encouragement that comes within that group from um, just helping each other achieve and, and grow. Mm, yeah, great. All right, yeah, there's another question in there. Corey, do you want to actually take that question? Sure. I'm just looking. Since we're highlighting your business tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at the q and I can't see the question in there. Not you? No. Um, all righty. What about you, Phil? Can you see it? Uh, no, I haven't got anything in the Q and A. I had okay. the Q and A last week, and I, I haven't got anything in there. Just oh, on, I might really? just chuck in a uh, question for, and this might be a little bit off topic. Oh, I'm go not, ahead. But um, I just heard some stuff recently about sound signatures on your video and that sort of stuff. And is that something that you do as well, Corey, with your videos or? No, but I actually, um, I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone who specialises in that, and um, yeah. they they make anthems basically for your for your business. So that that is a big thing because, as sometimes it can come off tacky, but those jingles you hear on on radio and all that sort of stuff, it does trigger a response in your brain. You always remember, like I could think of jingles when I was a kid that used to always play on TV. That still, um, I could probably remember exactly word for word today. So. There are people that specialize in that. Um, and yeah, basically the biggest thing is um, with music and stuff is you just got to make sure it is royalty free or it's been paid for. Cause that's where a lot of people go wrong and they just put a, a commercial track on the back of their video and it, it isn't actually allowed. What happens if you do that? Uh, it depends. Sometimes you'll just get asked, get, it'll get taken down. Um, and if it is, if you are prof profiting by, by a large amount, sometimes you might even, face uh, legal legal action mm. Mm. so jingle signature so signatures so you have a jingle at the end of your um, at your video and that's like a, a gonna be like a brand thing that whenever anybody hears that yes. they automatically think of your business yeah exactly right so say you had a, a video Glennis that ended up with the more customers more profits title at the end there might be a signature jingle that only you have mm -hmm. um, that really triggers the audience response and go I know that jingle I know what song I'd pick you know it would yeah. be the Rolling Stones start me up oh, I love it <laughs> <laughs> I think Microsoft used that as well at one point for their, yeah. for their new uh, software yeah it was really really effective what would your song be uh, myself. Um, like just putting each other on the spot here. That's all right. Um, <laughs> I'm listening. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good question. Um, you, Phil, while he's thinking about what would yours be? Well, I'd probably, I couldn't actually, yeah, you, you know all this, these songs and you can't think of one right on the top, but <laughs> well, well, I, I did hear the other day that Toyota haven't, uh, actually said, oh, what a feeling on their ads for 13 years now. Oh, you were joking. Really? All I've done, all I've done is play the ding, 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 ding. Yep. Totally later. Yep. So everyone sort of knows that tune. I think uh, Ted, Ted, I have a uh, 
the little tune at the start of their videos. Yeah. Like but anyway, so I've probably hijacked and gone off topic there. That's, with, no, no, that's all right. Corey, what do you, have you come up with a song? I, no, no, my, my go-to song whenever I need a, a pick-me-up is um, When the Levee Breaks by Led Zeppelin, so I'd probably have that. Ah, nice. That's a good one. That's awesome. So if you want to actually put any participant, sorry, the attendees on tonight's um, webinar, um, if you want to share with you what your your song would be, if you actually could have a, um, you know, a video, um, it's a video signature, is that right? Is that the terminology we're using? Yeah, that works. That, that makes sense. Yeah, put it in the chat or put it in your Q&A. That would be excellent to hear that. Um, so, well, look, well, Corey, tell us a little bit more about it. Do you niche in your business or, you know, who do you do videos for? Everyone? Yeah, so I do actually, I've started to really get um, specific of who I'm targeting because, as I said, like, what I do in the simplest form is I help businesses tell their stories. But to get really niche with that, um, I've, I've noticed that property experts like real estate agents and, and property developers They've just got a really bad reputation and um, the genuine ones probably get lost amongst all the, the sharks out there. So what I'm out to, to really cause is, is to find the genuine ones and, and make their, their true selves be out there online. So I'm, I'm really focusing on property experts and to tell their story and have themselves be represented and be honest instead of being seen as, as sharks and, and whatever. Yeah, that's good. And how are you going with that? Because I noticed that, you know, like the real estate industry is, um, well, it's not going down. It's just that really the people who can sell houses are still in business, really. The ones who can't sell are the ones that are, dro are dropping out. <clears throat> so, um, but they do have to lift their game because real estate agents really are starting to, but I think there's a bit of a stigma around them, a bit like car sales agents. Yeah. And, um, and I think business coaches are coming in the close third, I reckon, too. So sometimes you've got to have a real good reputation and there's got to be a lot of credibility behind someone who you're going to pay a lot of money to and trust that they actually do know you and are going to give you, a, you know, like put you in front of the right house from a real estate point of view, you know? Yeah, that's right. And that's, that's the thing. I, I want to find those people. I, I don't want to find the ones that are just out to promote themselves when they haven't actually got um, the best intentions at heart. So I've actually got um, a few meetings lined up with some, with some local real estate agents, which I'm excited for because I, I do want to help make an impact on, on, on the good ones. You know, I want to help them out as best as possible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, great. Um, that sounds really good. What about you, Phil? You know, like, is, do you use video or do your clients use video? Have they started using video in the content? Uh, yeah, different uh, businesses uh, work uh, different um, different strategies. Yeah. Uh, some, some talk about what they do and some talk about uh, what they love. So, you know, I'm, I might, no one might like to listen to me talk about my widgets, but they might listen like listening to me talk about uh, who you should tip in the footy this week. And <laughs> my business will just bring that to So there's lots of different ways that um, people can get involved in, in video. And that's all, for mine, it's all about uh, relationship building with your, with your customer base. And people can see you. Um, and listen makes it easier for them to know, like, and trust you, which is who people buy from. So, yeah, it's very powerful. Yeah, very good. Awesome. Well, I said before that I was going to share with you um, a bit of a story about um, Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs, um, the co-founders of Apple Computers, and, um, and how they built their business. So um, just in that book, Start With Why, from Simon Sinek, you know, it says in there that the personal computer revolution was beginning, just beginning, when Wozniak built Apple One. Um, and it just started, started to gain attention and technology was primarily seen as a tool for business. You know, computers were too complicated and they were out of the price range of the average individual. But Wozniak, he was a man motivated, he wasn't motivated by money. Um, he, he envisaged a nobler purpose for this technology 
and he saw that the personal computer as a way for the little man to take on a corporation. And if he could figure out a way to get it in the hands of the individual, he thought the computer would give nearly anyone the ability to perform many of the same functions and is vastly better resource company. So the personal computer could level the playing field, he thought, and change the way the world operated. So Wozniak designed the Apple I and improved the technology with the Apple II to be affordable and simple to use. So no matter how visionary or how brilliant a great idea or a great product, is, it isn't worth much if no one wants to buy it. So Wozniak's best friend at the time, a 21-year-old Steve Jobs, knew exactly what to do. Though he had experience selling surplus electronic parts, Jobs would prove to be much more than a good salesman. He wanted to do something significant in the world, and building a company was how he was going to do it. And Apple was the tool he used to ignite his revolution. And um, in the first year in business, with only one product, Apple made a million dollars in revenues. By year two, they did 10 million in sales. In their fourth year, they sold 100 million worth of computers. And in just six years, Apple Computer was a billion dollar company with over 3,000 employees. Six years. Amazing, isn't it? And wow. Jobs and Woz were not the only people taking part in the personal computer revolution at that time. They weren't the only smart guys in that business. In fact, they didn't know much about business at all. What made Apple special was not their ability to build such a fast growth company. It wasn't their ability to think differently about personal computers. What has made Apple special is that they've been able to repeat the pattern over and over and over, unlike any of their competitors. Apple had successfully challenged conventional thinking within the computer industry. The small electronics industry, the music industry, the mobile phone industry, and the broader entertainment industry. And the reason is simple. Apple inspires. Apple started with why. And, um, and that was it. You know, like, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? I mean, imagine, I've been in business for more than six years, and I'll tell you what, I don't have a billion-dollar company, right? Um, it's amazing, like, how when you are so motivated with your why, what could possibly happen? So, Corey, what do you get from that? Hmm. Well, yeah, it just shows that with a strong enough why and, and enough enough motivation behind it, you can just accomplish so much in a short amount of time. Yeah. As you said, like six years, that's just incredible. And the fact that they, that they weren't the only ones, um, you know, like there, there would have been so many reasons and justifications for why it's not achievable and why it, it won't happen, but they ignored all that and just stayed present to, to their why. Yeah. I know, and um, what about, what do you get from that, Phil? Yeah, well, I suppose it comes back to, yeah, what you said before about your why and giving you a purpose that's that's bigger than yourself and and um, sticking to that, mm. making that your, uh, your guidepost and, and all your decisions coming off that. Mm. It really is, and, and I, I share that, and I actually shared that with somebody today. I was talking to a... A potential coach in Adelaide and um, and I shared that with him and he goes you know what he goes you've just oh I can't remember his exact words but he said when I made an appointment with you from LinkedIn I didn't know who I was going to get to talk to on the other end of the on the phone but he said you've just inspired me with what you want to do he said I'm not ready to come with you in your system yet but give me six months I'll call you he said, but you can follow me up if you like. That's yeah. that's a that's a definite pipeline prospect, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I see that there's a question in the Q&A box as well. Um, you know, how did Martin Luther King? So, you know, and, and this is from Aaron. Thanks for being on the call, Aaron. I know you were there last week. Um, how did Martin Luther King get such a great crowd? Well, Martin Luther King knew how to inspire people. And he ran around and he used words that we even know today. Um, and he was just, he led a movement and it was, I have a dream. 
We all know that. When we hear the words, I have a dream, we think of Martin Luther King, right? So um, that's what inspires people. Yeah, that's right. he, he, uh, he had a dream, not a process. He had a dream. <laughs> yeah. And it was big, wasn't it? It was big. Yes. And yeah. it was outside himself. He had, he had a dream, not a list of features and benefits. <laughs> <laughs> wow, are you going to change your why again now, Phil? Oh, I've got some more to work on. I like 13 words. I'll see how I go. Oh, you can, I can say 15. I got mine down to 13 to yeah. prove that, you know, we can do it, you know. Yeah. Um, I just like, I just waffle on a bit, Glennis, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. I got that. Have you got a question in the? Can you have? Can you got a question to you want to share with um, with everyone? I think there's another one in the Q and A. Yeah, um, Greg. Yeah, I think Greg must have read the book or know a little bit about it or heard something. Since because he's asking about the the golden circle, Glenn. What's what's that? And oh yeah, the golden circle. Yeah. What, yeah, well, I suppose that, that comes down to the golden circle is all about, you, it comes down to your why, right? Um, and it's, if you can start thinking about, you know, the question that I said, why, 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 you know, I think that you start getting down to, um, uh, I know there's some more components in that golden circle and I don't can't quite remember them, but it actually comes down to your why, what you have to think about. Do you remember what they are? Yeah, so that, there was there was the three, and so in the middle was was why. Yeah. The the next uh, outer circle was uh, how. Yeah. And then the outermost circle is uh, what. So yep. I think what what Simon says, well, you should start and go one, two, three, but most people when they're talking about what they do or trying to sell something, they just go uh, three, two. Why and how? They just go what and how. Yeah. So they talk about their features and benefits, or they might go a bit deeper and have a good, a good USP. Yeah. But that's as far as it goes. So they actually, rather than starting on the inside and working out, they start on the outside. And work in. And that, but they only go, they only go halfway. Yeah. I think. Um, that's good. Also, he, he uh, I know in his book and that he, he had a good example about how Apple sells Apple. Yeah. Uh, using his, uh, his, his um, golden circle. So he might say if I was, if he was going to start, uh, if I my, myself was going to sell Apple, I'd start on the outside and I'd say, well, Apple make great computers. And then how I might say, well, they're beautifully designed and simple to use. Yeah. Um, do you want to buy one? Um, and that's probably how most people go. They'll describe what it is and then the benefits of it. And here, take it. He's saying that Apple um, started at one and started with why. And they say, well, everything we do at Apple, we believe is challenging the status quo. Yeah. We believe in thinking differently. And then they went to two, which is we make our products beautifully designed and simple to use. They're user friendly. Mm. And it says, uh, we just happen to make great computers. Do you want to buy one? Yeah. And so that's the power of beginning with why and working out as opposed to going from the outside and not actually even getting to the why. So Yeah. And that's all in the book. I've just, I actually, I have the book review with me, but um, the golden circle is all explained in the book. And in fact, if you don't like reading, you can jump on um, YouTube and just type that in. Yeah. And but that's a great, get, yeah. like, to me, that's a, a very simple way of how um, that whole concept relates back to how people can actually, uh, why the why is so important in actually explaining to people uh, what you've got to offer and make it e making an easier buying decision um, mm. for your for your customer 
Exactly. So if you're struggling with sales and sales conversions, actually getting the hold of that book or listening to the TED talk that Simon Sinek did around the golden circle and what to ask, and it really gives you a, um, a good analogy of the golden circle and how you can apply that to your business. Yeah. So, Corey, yeah. you have anything to say about that? Yeah, well, I've actually I've watched the, uh, the Simon clip as well, and he's got a great line there, and it's people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that really sums up the whole golden circle. And when you get to that real core of the golden circle, the why for Apple, uh, about challenging the status quo, when you even see that Apple symbol, that, that's what you think. Like it's just the whole branding, their whole image is revolves around their why, which is challenging the status quo. So it, it goes further than just their why. It actually represents who, who the company is and what they're about. So yeah, yeah, no, it's really powerful to have your why. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, look, we're coming up close to the top of the hour. We've got about three minutes left. Um, is there anything else that you want to say, Phil or Corey? I know that we, we haven't got any more questions in the uh, Q&A right now, but, you know, uh, firstly, I want to thank you both for being on, on the call and giving up your time and having a chat about this. And Corey, you know, you're inspirational in wanting to bring out culture and Australian stories and film, oh, sorry, and video films. Um, you know, what have you seen for yourself tonight just being on here and talking about that? Are you going to play a bigger game? I think I'm going to have to. Like, every time I talk about it, it it's funny because um, being, I've just been so business focused for um, the last couple of years. I just want to grow my video business, business sorry, that, um, the film stuff's there in the background, but when I can blend the two together, I just get this real burst of, I've said it before, but aliveness. And I just, I really love getting in touch with my why. So I really can't emphasize it enough that people need to either discover their why or get re, re, re in touch with it. So Reignited with it. Yeah, no, yeah, that's exactly. great. Well, thank you so much for being on the call, Corey. And remember Corey's from, so just give yourself another plug again. Yep, Melbourne Business Video Production. How do people get hold of you? How do they get in touch with you? Yeah, so it's just www.melbournebusinessvideoproduction.com. Um, please give me a call even on 0411788431. I'm also on all your social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and also Instagram. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's many ways to get in contact with me. Fantastic, and thank you so much. And, Phil, thanks again for being on tonight. No worries, Glenis. Uh, well, guest speaker of um, with us, and um, and what are you going to change your why? Are you going to play a bigger game? What's happening with you? Well, I, I'm a bit like Corey. I, I might have to, and I'm not sure. I'm, I'm fairly certain there'd be uh, a lot of uh, activities in the Rob Academy that might help me. Um, yeah, go this a bit further and and really uh, get me along too. So. I think I might have to dive deep into that. And uh, how do people get hold of you, Phil? And they want, you know, they want to get some growth strategies in relation to, you know, the retail and all the sorts of businesses that you are, because you do a lot of work out on East Melbourne, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So probably easiest is just uh, profitimprover.com.au. Yeah. Go there and you can send me a message there or there's uh, more details about how you can contact me there. So just profitimprover.com.au. Fantastic. And um, and I'll sign off. It's Glenis Gassman and what my why is, and I'm reducing the business failure rate from double digits, double digits to single digits in Australia and um, more customers, more profits. Thank you so much to Phil and Corey for being with us on the drive home tonight talking business about our why. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking with someone who is um, all about counting the minutes and our time management. So that's going to be a really good one as well. So um, so have a great rest of the night, rest, great week, uh, end of uh, July, because um, oh no, actually next week's the 31st of July. Um, so it'll be the last, last day of July. We should be seeing some goals for August. Um, so thanks so much, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Glennis. Have a good one. Yeah, See you, Phil. Thank you. See you, Corey. Bye. Bye, Glenis. Bye.